as a community, we are to surround people with love and understanding if we can find the capacity for that. But don't assume that you doing that is the solution for what the person is going through because you don't want to get comfortable or to a place where the person is suffering and we as a group become okay with the suffrage of our friends and family but we don't make suggestions of what does the better version of help look like for them because we're helping ourselves. It's not our jobs to tell ourselves or the people we're all you, you need. No, we're not all you need. We're hey, what's good, homies? Welcome back to another episode of Housekeeping. And we are in 2024. And let me tell you, it's the middle of January and a lot has happened within that short time and I am not telling you about any of the important parts, just the parts that matter. So within the last two weeks since 2024 started, I've dropped a new show, um, In My Shoes, which is a concept that we're building around, can we get back to storytelling, the story being the focus, the focus being shoes and how many miles have people walked in their shoes? What brought them to their shoes? What stories are associated with these shoes? And what stories and lessons can we learn from these shoes and the sacrifice that may have gone into purchasing the shoe, maintaining the shoe, or what had to be sacrificed for the moment? And does this encourage us to build a new world? <laughs> us to build on to more moments? Us to bring in more momentum into the work that we're doing and what are the next chapters of 2024 going to look like for get home safe and all things we have coming up with the people that i'm doing interviews with and just events that we have on the i'd say borderline is a good word so <laughs> this recent episode of in my shoes was not the butters the butters are a pair of tims world known for being in rap videos for being one of the, well, I wouldn't say monolith, but I would say mammoth of a business when it comes to Timberland themselves in terms of boots, because it is winter. So that's one of the most appropriate episodes to stand on. And what does it mean to be from New Jersey? What does it mean to own a pair of butters? <sighs> Why is self-care as a business so expensive? As someone that's within the self-care business, how important is it to pay attention to what's going on when it comes to the market of self-care and what does self-care look like for a person or how do you define and explain self-care to someone without actually saying using the words self-care also bringing back how do we also bring into the focus how we uh, also bring into focus how we let decisions also bring into focus how we let decisions from our jobs affect our everyday lives whether we're putting ourselves forward, what does that look like? Why are we not putting ourselves forward? And what would it look like to put the focus back on you, the worker and the person that drives the force that you've been hired in order to implement or to do? And when you get back home, do you know how to turn that off? Even if you're in strikes at home, do you know how to turn that off? When you're around your kids or you're around your loved ones, do you know how to not bring work home? And if that's not the case, you don't know how to bring work home, how does self-care need to be implemented in your life that needs to have a cleaner space for recovery and self-love and self-admiration and taking care of yourself? And what does the maintenance of actually getting back to being human look like? If you want the episode for uh, the Butters, hopefully I can put it somewhere in here, either here or here. And if not, the link will be down in the bio. Going from that onto something a little bit uh, more personal in terms of what's going on with me, man, I'm running into a lot of different cases of SI amongst folks who I know personally and folks I may not know personally. Now, when I say SI, SI stands for suicidal ideation. The reason this topic is so prevalent and close to the work that we do is <clears throat> there's a thing that happens when you let people know about the work that you do in different circles that aren't directly correlated or associated with your work. And there are moments that you sometimes have to clean up the things people didn't want to hear. You have to redefine certain relationships because people aren't respecting boundaries correctly. 
I, as a person and as a friend, try my best to be as honest with the people that are in my life as I can be. And with that, sometimes there are moments that people find out you do self-care events, you do mental health events, and you do community events that bring people closer and create peaceful places for people to coexist and maybe put certain things out there that they wouldn't be able to share amongst themselves privately or amongst their friends or associates who may not understand the burden that comes with dealing with these constraints. Not just SI, but the focus of SI is what my main focus for the month of January is right now privately in terms of folks that may be helping out, giving an air to and giving advice to. So. I'll share a private story. One of my boys recently has been, he's been seeing an uptick in SI and how that's been affecting his life and affecting his everyday. And outside of that, he's also coming across more health issues and within him letting me know what's going on and I've known what's been going on for a while, me and my other guy, we had to have a heart to heart with him and let him know even though I understand folks who deal with SI and we try to get those people help where we can or connect them with the right people, I'm very big on your community and those closest to you aren't the solution for what's going on. They are a part of the recovery process as to what's going on. And they are a part of the initiative process as to what's going on. So for example, if you have a friend or family member that's dealing with SI in terms of suicidal ideations and it either comes in the form of they are idolizing the way that they're going to go and then it starts to take a step from ideation into either attempts and if not attempts, they are starting to plan things out. It's very important to understand when something is above me now and you may not have the capacity for the answers of what's going on when most people are dealing with that or those moments most of us in terms of the general population that's not dealing with that directly we take their attempt failing or them struggling with the thoughts but no attempts being made as a sign that everything is okay and everything is indeed not okay. Now, I don't think people who deal with SI are the issue. I think the issue is how we as loved ones will let something we know or someone we know is not in the greatest of mentalities right now just coexist with us and we won't attempt to do research to look into what is the suggestion for that for something that may help them get better or help move them out of that space. We don't really look into what are certain IG channels or YouTubes that I can make recommendations to do my own research and go back to the loved one and have a conversation with how is SI affecting them? Are you seeing this, this, and this? Is this what you're dealing with? And we sometimes don't do our own due diligence of reaching out to professionals um, for example, end of each one of my clips that I put out there or content that I work on on the YouTube side, I make sure at the bottom that there's resources people can reach out to. So for example, on the men's side, we have expressyourselfblackmen.com. On the community side, we have loveyourselftoday.org. Correction, we have loveyourmindtoday.org on the community side. We also have cliniciansofcolor.org that I advertise underneath most of my videos that are put out there for content purposes in terms of if folks look for resources or to get help outside of the platform, we just make content and we make peaceful spaces for folks to have the conversations where they feel safe enough to share what they usually wouldn't be able to talk about and really have the general conversation of what is the struggle, how do people meet in the middle, and what can we do for them. On the community side, we also have inclusivetherapist.com. So there's other resources outside of the platforms of 
the conversations that we've created on Get Home Safe, the talks that we've had about folks that are either treating those with SI or dealing with SI themselves. And the reason I bring this back, just to bring it back into focus is, as a community, we are to surround people with love and understanding if we could find the capacity for that. But don't assume that you doing that is the solution for what the person is going through because you don't want to get comfortable or to a place where the person is suffering and we as a group become okay with the suffrage of our friends and family, but we don't make suggestions of what does the better version of help look like for them because we're helping ourselves. It's not our jobs to tell ourselves or the people we're all you you need no we're not all you need we're a part of what you need but if you don't get help to go and get a therapist if you don't get help to sit with a doctor and see if there's medication that can maybe balance this thought process off or if you don't you as the person that's going through what's going that's going through what's going on in your head or what's actually going on with you and you feel what's going on with you when it comes to the world and how you're being treated and how things are happening the friendship and the support is just a cushion for a heavy fall and there's only so many times the human body can take a fall and get back up we're built to break we're, we're built to also build ourselves back up but there are breaks and each one of us has a certain amount of breaks that we can take and we have a certain amount of limits to how many breaks we can go through until we can no longer pick up the pieces or the pieces will no longer fit with who we are or who we've become. If you're dealing with SI or suicidal ideation or you know someone that's dealing with SI or suicidal ideation and you have you are there for them and you're doing your best to be there for them as a suggestion it's okay to look into things with them it's okay to make time for meetings they may have to go to it's okay to i wouldn't say not leave them alone but make yourself available when they need you to but it's not okay to just accept things as they are because they're not gone yet i'm sorry not everyone's gonna make it i do understand that but when it comes to this work a lot of this work that i do has a uh, less than 33 percent survival rate i've lost a lot of people in the work that i've done and i don't say those words lightly and it's it's not it's not any harder yesterday as it is today but doing the work and understanding that the work doesn't always help you still have work to do and you still have folks to look out for and you still have people to reach out to and you still are going to have people that you have to be honest with in life today or tomorrow but the honesty needs to be there so with that being said be honest with yourself when it comes to the people that you're helping out and be honest with the people that you care for and also set your boundaries correctly. If you feel lines are being crossed in terms of you trying to help them and be there for them or the wrong assumptions are being made, it's okay to step away from the relationship for a couple of days and figure out what are the right words to be honest with this person that you're trying to help because you helping a friend, you helping a loved one isn't supposed to come at the sacrifice of you yourself. It's not supposed to turn into something abusive. It's not supposed to turn into something that makes you angry at the thought of what's going on. And it's not supposed to be something worry is understandable. But once you go from being one thing to being another, and now this person or individual tries to fit you as a cog in their life into every single thing that's an issue and extra responsibility start getting thrown on you because you've made yourself available it's okay to put up boundaries it's okay to put up boundaries and it's okay to still figure out how to be friends with newer boundaries and moving around that just a word of advice 
I've done this quite a few times. It never gets old, it never gets easy. And life isn't supposed to be easy, but doing things from a place of love, sometimes realize that love has a lot of different forms outside of just kindness. So let's talk about this episode of Mental Health Monday that we just dropped this week. What is art therapy? When it comes to a lot of the work that I've done, especially coming out of 2020, when the world started to open back up in 2021 and 2022, there was a shift in the work that Get Home Safe was doing where I wanted to incorporate a stronger brand of wellness. And, you know, to my benefit, I was blessed to work with a couple of really great individuals between Jasmine does yoga, China does sound bowls, um, Lilu Yoga also does yoga um, with the incorporation of cannabis, but that's more something on the side. Yoga is the focus and the wellness of breathing and meditation and all those other things that you've heard about and you may have experienced or not experienced. I realized that I may need to be a little bit more intentional of am I putting together a wellness event or am I putting together the combination of a mental health and wellness event? And what does that look like? And what are things that I'm going to have to start being concerned about when it comes to the language and what we're offering the community? In this interview, we painted while talking because I've always wanted to do a proper art therapy session and see what that's like and define what is art therapy what should you as a client expect from your therapist in our therapy section? What should you as someone that sees like an art event, like let's say a sip and paint, for example, what should you expect from a sip and paint? And if someone is doing a mental health event or specifically an art therapy event, what exactly makes an event an art therapy event? And what should they have on site in order to bring mental health to the wor world of art? And what should be delivered as someone that is attending this for the first time? And in a more clinical sense, what is art therapy in itself? And what is it accomplishing as someone that may not be from that world? Or this may be your first time being a part of an art therapy session. During this discussion, Allie, my friend who pulled up for us to have the interview, who's working on her master's program to become an art therapist. So she's done a couple of sessions here and there and she's done a lot of work, but she's a couple of months removed from being an official art therapist who's already done a couple of sessions. We discussed the importance of the word safe space, how that word is overused and underdelivered in a lot of different rooms and what does a safe space mean and why it may be better to call these spaces a peaceful place. When you say a safe space, there are people in the world that may not have ever in their life truly experienced a safe space. So saying we create a safe space to the community or advertising this is a safe space for you to do this that, and the third may come off the wrong way where in a peaceful place all of us have had examples of what peace looks like we know that comes with a time limit we know we know what we would like peace to look like there's examples of peace and when it comes to the word safe space because there's been so many things that so many people have gone through the sentiment is appreciated, but if that space that is called or the claim to fame is it is a safe space and it doesn't deliver what they're looking for within a safe space, you cause ruptures. Then causing rush when and in causing ruptures, what you tend to see is the close relationship that can happen, the work that you could accomplish, the people that you could be there for, and the resources that you can share that rupture may always stand in the way of giving the community the resources that they deserve or the experience that they've never had before. And they now have an example of that. And we could go on to, is this something you can create for yourself? Do you have the right people around you? And may that be playing into things and why it is hard for you to find a peaceful place for yourself. So peaceful place, 
versus safe space. I know there's going to be a lot of pushback on that, and I understand that, but I do a lot of mental health events. I do a lot of mental health and wellness events. I work with great people that do sound bowl, yoga. We have an all-men event that we advertise as a safe space for men to express themselves and for us to delve into deeper topics that we may not be able to dive into in our ordinary people. And if there's people that are curious, advertising these things are important. So it's the little things right now, but as the little things become bigger, we really try to not only position ourselves, but figure out, are we really doing what's right? And what does that look like? Are you getting it right? Are you getting it wrong? And if you are getting it wrong, are you putting an effort to change the thing that's wrong into the better version until you get it right? <clears throat> and then, you know, just ending off on. And then, you know, just ending off on the power of being able to create without judgment when we come into the event space or the mental health space especially as we create these new versions of things that already exist and we serve it to our community. We usually try to step into this, keeping in mind that the goal is to allow people to create or to have something that they haven't had. And the goal is for everyone to make mistakes, even sometimes ourselves included. We make mistakes until it gets better. We make we make mistakes until people correct us and we make mistakes hoping that the community corrects us and lets us know, actually, I didn't like that thing that you did, but here's the better version. But thank you for trying or, hey, you're trying too hard. You already have it right. Don't mess up a good thing. Those are great mistakes to have. Bad mistakes to have is claiming that we made something that was a safe space or we made something that was a peaceful place. And we're sharing stories associated with the person's name, their struggle that they went through, and five other things that you already promised in making this safe space want to be out there publicly. So within this episode of Housekeeping, I have no idea what episode this is, but I know this is the first episode of 2024. I just want to leave everybody with a piece of advice and ask, <clears throat> now that a lot of us are it's been so overbearing when it comes to the word safe space and we know what peace is like. Are you doing everything that you can for yourself to set up proper boundaries with the folks that you're trying to help? Are you doing everything that you can to set up boundaries with yourself? And you may be doing a little bit too much. What does that look like? And as we finish off this week, because we have another episode of Am My Shoes Dropping? tomorrow is it Thursday because it's being shot right now Wednesday something in the morning too early in the morning I ask that you just put your best foot forward pun intended so it's your boy Juice Jones from Get Home Safe back with another episode of um, housekeeping I had to, almost forgot what show we we're doing on this shoe right now uh, thanks for all the homies that pulled up thanks for the people that are listening if anybody needs advice or feels that's a good point but could you elaborate more please let me know down to the bottom definitely looking forward to that i'll also have links for the two shows that we dropped this week between mental health monday with ali in terms of art therapy with us painting things while doing an interview and this episode of in my shoes episode two we have a talented young person because we can't say who it is for the concept of the show and they will be washing Nike up tempos. No, Nike the up tempos, I think is the title of the shoe. And what's fascinating about this is you tend to realize that the way people clean their shoes and clean their sneakers and tell their stories, a lot of those habits in terms of how detailed they are in the things that they do or how much force they use or how overly focused and maniacal they are in the things that they're doing a lot of those habits tend to translate into real life and how they handle things so this has been another episode of uh housekeeping yes oh it's been a long day anyway this has been another episode of housekeeping thank you to everyone for pulling up like subscribe share and i'll see you homies later peace <laughs>